It's time for this week's parting shots. Around this time last year, after the Big Ten originally postponed its football season due to COVID-19, Nebraska coach Scott Frost was one of the faces of a movement to demand the conference reverse course and play football. The season resumed a month later, but little did we know, in spite of NCAA restrictions on team activities, the Cornhuskers had been playing. This week, Nebraska announced the NCAA is investigating whether the football program, among other things, held supervised workouts off campus once they were banned. The school says it's complying with the investigation. This isn't terribly surprising on some levels, as the forces of competition guaranteed some program or programs would make sure no one got a leg up on them. But it's still disturbing, and it might cost Frost his job, especially since, even with allegedly illicit preparation, Nebraska finished 3-5, and five, the Huskers' third losing season in Frost's three-season tenure. It's losing that gets coaches fired, but it's cheating that lets their bosses fire them with calls. To save his job, Frost risked the guaranteed money in his contract. Now, the athletic director who hired him is gone, something that rarely favors a struggling coach. All of that's to say Frost allegedly endangered his player's safety for nothing. He gained nothing. Neither did Nebraska. The media that cheered on his demands for a season will run him out with the same enthusiasm. And it will be exactly what he deserves. This week, Mets owner Steve Cohen got himself some attention when he criticized his team in a public forum, tweeting, It's hard to understand how professional hitters can be this unproductive. The best teams have a more disciplined approach. The slugging and OPS numbers don't lie. What's more disciplined than putting your own team on blast through a tweet? Not many owners are that publicly critical of their own teams. That is something that fans do. Most owners realize what's more productive is to come up with a plan to figure out how the Mets run in first place for three months all came crashing down, not to post to Twitter. But Steve Cohen spent his life intensely focused on making a lot of money. He bought the team and now he's in charge and he's letting everyone know it's his team. If Mets executives, coaches, and players want to stay on payroll and not join the ranks of the two hitting coaches they fired this year, they'll see his tweet and they'll understand the messaging. Right or wrong about baseball, it's Cohen's team. But when self-preservation instead of figuring out how to win dominates your culture on your baseball team, you got, well, you got the Mets. Earlier this week, when asked what the Detroit Tigers should do when pitching to Los Angeles Angels superstar Shohei Otani, Tigers announcer Jack Morris responded by using an Asian accent. Realizing soon thereafter that his remark was offensive, Morris apologized during the broadcast. He was later suspended. The unflappable Otani, when asked about it after the fact, handled the matter with grace, saying he wasn't offended by Morris's remark. But once again, the focus shifted from where it should be on a major league season by a player the likes of which we've never seen. Only a handful of pitchers throw harder than Otani. He's on pace to have more strikeouts per nine innings than any Angels pitcher ever, breaking the club record of Hall of Famer Nolan Ryan. And oh, by the way, Otani just clubbed his 40th home run. Those are accomplishments that transcend ethnicity, language, and certainly the racially tinged comment of Morris. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.